And that was Republican presidential candidate Ambassador Nikki Haley speaking with me on this program last weekend on her major campaign priorities. She joins a field that includes President Trump and technology entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy vying for the GOP presidential nomination. Ramaswamy launched his bid for the Oval Office last month and has made a number of campaign commitments, including ending affirmative action, stopping U.S. dependence on China, and term limits for elected federal government officials. Joining me right now is the man himself, Vivek Ramaswamy, is here. He's the co-founder and executive chairman of the Strive Asset Management. He also founded the pharmaceutical company Royvant Sciences. And it is great to see you, Vivek. Thanks very much for being here this morning. Good morning, Maria. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you going to take this to the next level? We've been talking about corruption all morning. The chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, Jim Jordan, trying to hold the other side to account Uh, You also have major issues regarding foreign policy. What are your plans there? So, look, I think one of the top priorities is make sure the people we elect to run the government are the ones who actually run the government. And for me, that starts with the presidency. And so you want to talk about actual reform. There's a lot that the U.S. president can do even by executive order. The system works slowly when your first acts have to go through Congress. That's why I've said I'm going to end affirmative action in America because Lyndon Johnson created it by executive order. I can end it by executive order. And I'm surprised, Maria, that not a single Republican has ever, I think, since then run on that premise. Well, abandoning climate religion that shackles the United States while leaving China untouched. These are things that the U.S. president can lead the way on. But it requires somebody who takes a strong view of the Constitution and says that these are things I don't need permission for Congress to do. Managerial and bureaucratic reform will liberate this country. And I think it's time to get rid of that managerial class. That's one of my top domestic priorities. Unfortunately, the Biden administration uh, main priority is the climate change agenda. This is a whole of government approach and it has uh, impacted the national security of being uh, oil independent, energy independent. Absolutely. I mean, you think about actually handing $40 billion plus to Ukraine with one hand at the same time that Biden was lobbying actually the EU from its Russian oil import ban. The reason is because we've shot our own fossil fuel industry in the foot, and it is because of this climate religion. But the dirty little secret, Maria, that not a lot of people know is the climate religion actually has nothing to do with the climate. It is all about power, control, dominion, and apologizing for America's own success. And the reason why is that this religion looks the other way when PetroChina picks up the projects that American companies drop. Last time I checked, it was global climate change. And also it's hostile to nuclear energy, which is truly bizarre because that's the best form of carbon free energy production known to mankind. The problem for them is that nuclear energy might be too good at solving their alleged problem. Mm. What they really want to do is punish America and establish this agenda of global equity, which also allows China to catch up to us. And I think it's important we have a president who sees through that. Mm -hmm. Republicans dance around this issue a little bit too delicately. I say it expressly. We need to abandon climate religion in America. That's the easiest step to unshackle our economy. All right, let's take a short break and have more with Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, Stay with us. Welcome back. And we are back with Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who is uh, efforting the nomination from the GOP. Vivek, how are you going to do this? You need money. Let's face it. A lot of big donors have gotten behind Ron DeSantis, governor of Florida. President Trump has seen an enormous reaction from individuals, individuals donating to the former president. I'm reading here pro ESG Chuck Schumer was the top recipient of BlackRock donations in 2022. It's about money. How are you going to raise enough cash to actually make a difference in the 2024 election? Well, Maria, I'll tell you what I didn't do, which is what most candidates do is ring a tin can and take a hat in hand to beg a bunch of donors for permission to run. I did not do that because I've been privileged to live the full arc of the American dream. I wasn't born rich, but I've built companies and had success and I'm investing heavily in the campaign. But that's not even going to be what lifts this up. What lifts this up is actually a grassroots uprising of small dollar donors that want to take this America first agenda to the next level. Vivek 2024.com. V-I-V-E-K. That's my name. 2024.com. What we're actually seeing is a wave of support. Even in the first week that we've been in this race, it's actually been overwhelming, drawing people in who, yes, identify as Republicans, but even more importantly, people who are part of this pro-American movement. That's really what's going to lift this all the way to success. And what we've seen in Iowa to New Hampshire is that I think voters are hungry for substance. They're hungry for someone to lead the way, not on the who, some biographical brawl between two individuals. No, they're hungry for the what and the why. Mm. And I'll tell you this, Maria, we are already leading the way in defining that agenda with specificity and with solutions. That is why I'm in this race. So how much money do you need? 
So I think whoever wins this race, you know, they're saying that people, someone's going to spend over well over a billion dollars. Wow. If not even more than that, it's going to be one of the most expensive presidential cycles. But it's going to be driven by the message and the substance. Yeah. The good news is, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in a position to actually kickstart this such that money is not going to be our issue. Well, I'll tell the you. The message and, 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 the, and the vision is actually what's going to drive President this. President Biden had a message right before the uh, election. Uh, this most recent election, and that was he was going to forget young people's student debt. And today, and two years later, we're still talking about the push for college loans to be canceled. The Supreme Court uh, also uh, looking at this. Your thoughts in terms of uh, forg- forgiving student loan debt. Some people say that's going to cost $400, million, uh, $400 billion, could go all the way up to a trillion. It's a bad idea all the way down. It is a regressive tax. Democrats, in the name of progressive taxation, are actually creating a regressive policy. Not a lot of people know this, Maria. Oh, it's only barely over a third of American adults who actually even have a four-year college education. So you're redistributing money from people who didn't get that opportunity to people who did. Yeah. And you know what, though? It's just a symptom of what the Department of Education does in this country every day, subsidizing four-year college education, which is also why I've said I'm going to shut down the Department of Education because it does not need to exist at the federal level. Shut down the Department of Education. Okay. Vivek, it's yes. great to talk with you. We will continue the conversation. Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy joining us this morning. Thank you, sir. That'll do it for us.